Okay, so, you know, having been in broadcasting prior to starting my leadership performance firm, it's always fun to have someone who was famous, is still, even though you're not on camera anymore, um, on television, a meteorologist. And that's who's with me today. So you just stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of information. I'll bet questions you've always wanted to ask a meteorologist too. Stay tuned. Welcome to our podcast, Doing It Right. This podcast reveals authentic stories from successful leaders doing it right. It's about their journey to become a leader, their choices, motivations, and lessons. In essence, how they built successful personal brands. Your host is Valerie Sokolowski, author of eight leadership books and nationally known as an authority on executive presence and personal branding. Let's get started. Here's Valerie. Okay, welcome Kaylee Dion Pear. Yes. That is a <laughs> long a name. <laughs> well, okay, so Kaylee Dion is my maiden name. Okay. So that's, you know, my parents, you know, my they last name, right? Started my career uh, in television under Kaylee Dion, right? Then I got married and I didn't take his name on television, but I did in real life. So now that I'm no longer in television, we have to add the pair. And you really want it all three, yeah, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm so Kaylee Dion, you know. Well, you are all three, <laughs> aren't you, Kaylee? <laughs> so here's what's so interesting about you. I want, I want the show to be about a couple of things. Obviously, being a meteorologist. I've always wanted to have a meteorologist. Kaylee, I, this is the fourth year of doing it right. And wow, that's amazing. I kept, I kept waiting for, well, I, you know, I, I'd reach out and no answers. And then all of a sudden you came into my life. That's just really bizarre and wonderful. Yeah. So thank you for filling that. And I love abundantly, it. Abundantly, abundantly filling a role of a woman who just adopted. And we're going to talk about all three. So I want to start though about being a meteorologist. Is that okay? Oh Yeah. Absolutely. Kaylee, what does it take to be a meteorologist? Uh, a lot of schooling. I went to college for eight years. So, you, you know, to be a television meteorologist, you really need to learn how to be comfortable in front of the camera, mm -hmm. you know, for a lot of different things. But you also need to be able to story, be a storyteller. So that's a big part of it. So I went to school for a Bachelor of, of Arts in radio, television, broadcasting first. And then I went for the science, the Bachelor of Science in Meteorology, to learn the meteorology, meteorology and the science and everything. But you were taking seven, eight you know, layers of the atmosphere and trying to put them in 30 seconds. Like, you have to be able to tell that story, you know? And you did it beautifully. <laughs> well, thank you. On a lot of stations, but where I learned about you is you were on the WFAA station right here in Dallas, Texas. And I loved watching you, Kaylee, because you were so fun and energetic, just like you are now, and smiling and real. And it wasn't, and here's this, and here's that, and we're going to have. I mean, it was none of that. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were a, what is it called, atmospheric scientist to the max, but you were <laughs> a lot of fun. I, I get bored very easily with just anything. So I would get bored with the way, you know, with weather. <laughs> And so I had to make it fun so that if I wanted you to be just as excited as I was, okay. because I think it is extremely fascinating. To this day, I still think it's extremely fascinating. So I wanted you guys to see why mm -hmm. I thought it was fascinating. So See, I know, and that came across. <laughs> that really came across. Was there anything in the years that you did uh, this work that was surprising to you? Uh, no. Um you had it all researched and all of that? I think I think what was surprising to me, and I don't want to take I don't want to bring negative out, but I think mm -hmm. what was surprising to me is how little you're valued in that business. Really? Yeah. So that I think was the most surprising. Like huh. I knew as as any young adult coming out of college, no matter what career you're in, mm -hmm. you have to work your way up. You have to work hard. You have to put in the hours. You have to put in more than what you feel like you should because you're working your way up, right? But that working your way up never really goes away. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. And I think that was the biggest surprise to me is that. I don't like to bring negative, but that's really Well, it. that's not negative. If that's reality, <laughs> that's reality. What would you then say to uh, people now, young people now who are wanting to do what you were doing? Mm -hmm. um, and they're all excited. 
Mm -hmm. you know, what would you advise them? I would say fight for yourself because you really <laughs> – uh, you know, bet on yourself, which I, I say about yourself. Uh, which I say about me starting my business as well. Mm -hmm. But you think, oh, I'm so they make you feel you're so lucky to have this job. You're so lucky to have this job. Don't ask for anything when you're doing contract negotiations. But I would say, even if you are first contract, first TV station, you still deserve you still deserve to be there, and you need to know that so that you can fight for yourself. You know, good, yeah. Kaylee. That's yeah. one of your top takeaways, one of our top <laughs> takeaways that I was going to get to, and you just did it. Uh, isn't that true with life? Mm -hmm. We have to, my words now, we've got to own who we are. Mm -hmm. And that sounds so simple. But when it gets down to it, when you really own who you are, the depth of who you are, then you are self-confident. Mm-hmm. And what do we all need these days when we're so put down, put down, put around, chaos, you know? Self-confidence. Easy to lose mm -hmm. the mojo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Well, your mom, your mm -hmm. mom was in TV. So yeah. tell, us, <laughs> tell us about that. So well, she was in radio, television, broadcasting. So she did radio um, and she told me not to do broadcasting. <laughs> she did. She said, well, I mean, she basically told me, I pay them to employ me basically because it costs more for her to drive there than they paid her to do the things that she did. But So if you want to get rich, it's not <laughs> – Don't do broadcasting <laughs> okay. um, because it's not going to happen. Uh, but she, she was in radio and it was awesome uh, as a kid to have that. My mom's on the radio. I was on the radio. I would do these spots that were, this is my mom on WLRT. Aww. You know, so that was cool. Um, but yeah, she told me early on, don't do it. So that's probably why I did it to begin with, <laughs> you know, because we're always told, okay, don't walk through that door. And you're like, well, now I want to walk through the door. <laughs> so other than getting on camera and telling us what we can expect with the weather, it's raining. Good. I see that. Yeah. What is it about it that's fat that was fascinating to you? Oh, I there is so much that goes into, you know, whether it snows here or across the street. There is so much that goes into whether that tornado moves down the street or, you know, 30 miles away or it completely collapses and doesn't happen at all that it's so fascinating to me to see those parts and pieces and if they come together. And mm. that's why I had to do it because mm -hmm. there was a huge tornado outbreak when I was 11 and there was tornado sirens going off, lots of damage from tornadoes in central Illinois. And I said, I got to know everything about this. <laughs> so curiosity. Yeah. I need to know everything about what happened and how I can stay and protect my family and, you know, moving forward. Huh. So and now the most fascinating, it's cool to look at it and say, okay, well, it's, it's, you know, 39 degrees at the surface, but it's, you know, up above in the layers, it's 44, 44, 32. And so we have melting. So you're not going to have snow. Mm -hmm. So looking at all of that and being able to know that and it communicated to somebody else is really the part I like about it the most. Well, <laughs> and Kaylee, you are so good. And on camera, we're so good about communicating it clearly. Now, let's face it. It's, it's not easy for most people to get on camera. I have mm -hmm. guests that say, oh, I have to be on camera? Can't I just have my voice? No. So you never had that problem because why? What else do you do so beautifully? I sing and dance. <laughs> I was in theater for a long time. I was going to give you the answer. I told my parents at the age, my mom was talking to my husband this weekend. They came to visit and she said, she said at age you know, four or five, I'm going to be in the TV. Like I, I had, I just knew that that's what I was going to do. And at four or five. Yeah. Oh. And I wrote my Oscar speech. Well, I have not won an Oscar yet, but Hey, still time. Um, I wrote that and it's on my parents' wall. And I wrote that in sixth grade, like me accepting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I've, I've always kind of just like, <laughs> you know what that, you know what that is, is really bringing up for me is you, you said you wrote it in what age? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. So think about this, audience. You were projecting. You had, a, whether you knew it or not, you had a dream. You had a thought, and mm -hmm. you just went toward it. It's great. Wouldn't it be wonderful if every teenager had a real idea of their purpose? And oh, that's I, unusual. That was the year I went through a lot of bullying. Like I was bullied very badly. And you were bullied? Bullied very badly. Like parents almost homeschooled me. It was a bad time. Um, but Why? I. 
Um, I was a new kid in school and I was even bullied by a teacher, but she had tenure, so she couldn't it's a whole thing. Uh, it's it's a whole <laughs> it's a whole thing going back. Um but the thing that I say to kids when I go to school talks, when I would do school talks mm -hmm. is that knowing and having that I, I, I just stuck with this is a small part of my life. This is a small part of my life. I'm going to go on and do so much more than this that mm -hmm. helped me to think out of that. Cause otherwise it was very hard to think past that, if that makes sense. Oh, you know what? That's such a wonderful way of looking at it because um, I've always felt like, and a relative of mine also was bullied, but you know what? She's strong. You're strong. Mm -hmm. Probably mm -hmm. girl than you would have been. Yeah. And, Stronger. and that's what I say. I'm like, don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. Because I had a woman tell me, a teacher when I was in sixth grade, you're not going to be on TV. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do and I, then she had me back later to speak at, to her class when I was working in Chicago as a television meteorologist because that's where I grew up is near there. So I was like, well, what happened? Yeah, so <laughs> look at me now. That's that's just great. I've got a few jokes for meteorologists. You ready? Oh, yay. I'm terrible at jokes. Where do meteorologists save their weather predictions? I don't know. In the cloud. <laughs> That's really good. You can, can steal I, that. Can I? Yeah. yeah can I, I have it's written down here? I, you can have that. Okay. Uh, why was the meteorologist so stressed? I don't know. <laughs> the job is full of high pressure. Ooh, that's good too. <laughs> okay, I'll give those to you. Um, so, who that's do you really look up to in the meteorology field? Oh goodness. Oh. I, there's not just one person. Okay. I think there's been multiple people that I've looked up to. Um, Judy Frazier, you know, she's a central Illinois meteorologist. She worked in Boston too, but um, very early in my career, I worked with her and she was a woman. Um, and, and women have come a long way in that business since late 2000s when I, you know, started. And she had said, you know, stand your ground. You know, she's, she's been on the air for 30 years. They hadn't replaced her with somebody younger. And, you know, and she was like, just keep going, fight for yourself. And she was amazing. She's retired now, love her to death. And then my first chief meteorologist, Jim Razor, again, it's people that you don't know around here, but mm -hmm. he was the first one to allow me to be in front of the camera. And I didn't have a meteorology degree yet. So I just had the radio television degree, mm. but I had passion for weather and I knew some things, mm -hmm. but he let me stand in front of the camera and give the weather. And I, I'm not sure he should have, but um, <laughs> he also was huge and he would sit with me and he would go through each level of the atmosphere and he would take the time when really you don't have the time. You're, you're time, you know, sensitive in that business. And he would teach me everything. So mm -hmm. him and then um, a, a woman named Stephanie Abrams on the Weather Channel, if any of you know, because she's, she's kind of bulldozed through this business and does an amazing job. So mm -hmm. it's wonderful to have uh, me people, mentors and mm -hmm. people that they may not even know. She doesn't know me for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I would suggest is that you reach out and let her know that, mm -hmm. Kaylee. Oh, maybe I'll send her a tweet mm -hmm. or <laughs> have a cup of coffee if she's in town. Yeah. Because we don't know if we've made an impact on mm -hmm. somebody. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Very true. Very often I'll say, and I will to you in the audience, which is, uh, was there a teacher in your life that really made an impact? And obviously most people say, yes, Mr. or Mrs. And then my next statement is, do they know that? No. Well, if they're still alive, could you let them know that? <laughs> and it's been, no, seriously, it's been amazing how many really beautiful uh, past relationships have been formed. That's now cool. the child is an adult. And, and so think about that. Just yeah. Okay. So uh, you had to do a lot of extra shifts too. Yes. And so the typical day in the life of is... There is no typical. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There is no typical because it would either be, you know, if when I was doing the morning shift at several stations, I worked the morning shift, I would get up at, you know, 1.45 and I would be there by no later than 2.45 or 3. And then the shift would end either at 10 o'clock or if I did the midday show, it would end at 12. Um, and then maybe you have a school talk you go to after that. So they're really – and then if you did the afternoon, it starts at, you know, 2.00 ends at 11 30 
there really is no Did typical. you sleep much? No, I actually don't – I haven't slept since I started in TV and it's still – somehow I don't sleep anymore <laughs> because of that. Really? Oh, yeah. I, I have sleep issues. That's a whole other box to unpack. That's so interesting. <laughs> I mean, these are the, the – fascinating, the little things that, w that we don't know. Um, okay. So singer, dancer, a young woman with so many talents and now – You've moved on. Tell us what you're doing now. So I am. Uh, I started my own social media marketing agency called called Paired Up. Uh, Pair P A I R. That mm -hmm. is your last name. Yeah, Paired Up. That's really great. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're paired up to help your company succeed on social media. So that's now. How did that start? You go from <laughs> being in the I know, weather a to now you're a social media expert. Yeah. Where did you learn that? So, you know, when you're in television, there's more than just, you know, a lot of people think you wake up and you are just on TV and you do that and you're done. There's so much more that goes into it. So back when social media first started, I mean, I was starting at my first job and I was the social media person. Like I was like, this is going to be big. This is a huge communication for us that is different than TV. And I always said that this, we're not doing the same thing. We're doing it. Right. We're, we're communicating differently. So, you, you know, I've spoke at weather conferences about social media and the impacts on severe weather coverage. And I've won webbies for, you know, an Instagram show. I was always kind of thinking the social, the way to go social, you mm -hmm. know? So it, it was already happening when I was doing TV. And then when you know, COVID, during COVID, we worked from home. So I broadcast from my house. I <laughs> moved to Dallas and three months later was sent home and worked at home the rest of the time that I worked there. Mm. Like I think I was back in studio for like a month or two before my contract was up and I didn't stay with them. And it was the most bizarre time because mm -hmm. normally you're with the people you work with all the time. And I came in and I be we barely had time to connect and make relationships before – we're sent, we're sent home. So I'm at home and it, it, instead of having the community within the station, I found a community within my neighborhood. And so I met um, this man. He runs a company and he was paying someone in a different country to do his social media. And I was like, please just let me help you with this. You know, I, let me do this because <laughs> <laughs> we can do this together, you know. So I started doing it and he, and he was like, did you do this? Mm. And I'm like, yeah, in five minutes, you know. With my hands tied behind my back, like that's just what we would do in TV. You have a deadline. So you come in, you know, I'd have to get this done, this done, this done by the time we start the show, you know? So there's a deadline and I would get all those things done. And that's essentially what you're doing for social media. Plus we're thinking about your brand. We're telling your story. And he was like, you don't even know my business, but all of a sudden you're telling, you're writing articles about my business. And I'm like, well, that's what a, a journalist does. Mm -hmm. If you were to come on and be, you know, we would look into what you do and make a story about you. And that's essentially what your social media should be, you know? So right. that's when it started. And then he said, Kaylee, you have something here. <laughs> uh -huh. And then businesses started to see that you can no longer just have the front desk person or an intern or yourself running your social media. You need to give it to somebody who's capable because it is now going to be more important marketing than print, TV, anything. And so I, it was the time. And I said, okay, we're doing this. <laughs> so that, that goes so beautifully to when it's your time, mm -hmm. it is your time. Yeah. I mean, I was you looking for it. ways to get out of TV for a long time <laughs> because it just wasn't for me anymore. And I, you know, I had to find the right thing that was I was passionate about that I'm good at and that I believe in for other people. Mm -hmm. And now I get to be the one that represents them instead of me being the face, you know? It's it's really fun. It just it just mm -hmm. evolved and you're yeah. enjoying it. And that's the important thing. You said, I love it. When we met, you said, I get to be nerdy. I would have never I get to be thought nerdy. of this young woman as being nerdy. I mean, that just doesn't seem to be anywhere here. Oh. My favorite part of what I did in TV was the behind the scenes, the stuff you didn't even see, mm -hmm. which is the looking into the story I was going to tell, whether it was going to be the school talk that I was going to, the kids that I was going to talk to, whether it was going to be – whether it was going to snow or severe weather or what, whatever that was. And then also, you know, if I was doing a story, there was tons of times that I would go out and do a fun light piece mm -hmm. that I would help the station with and those were the best moments. The other stuff is just part of it. <laughs>
Well, all of that we are going to have at the end of the show, how you can reach out to Kaylee uh, to handle your social media. And it, and people can be all over the country and you still oh, handle yeah. it. We have several um, companies in different states. And we have, I mean, California, Illinois, Florida, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. You know how often people will say to me, gosh, you're doing an incredible job on social media. How do you find time? <laughs> and I say, I don't. Someone in <laughs> Germany does it. Yeah. So thank God for people like you, Kaylee. You can't do it and do it well. No. You can do it. No. You can do it. I, I did. I tried. But. But no, yeah. mm -hmm. it, you know, it, mm -hmm. here's the deal. It's your joy and mm -hmm. it's something you're really good at. Mm -hmm. It's not my joy and I don't want to learn it. And mm -hmm. so why would I struggle? I, yeah. I, I had to get to that mm -hmm. point. Yeah. I want to take a whole nother switch now about you talking to us about going through the adoption process mm -hmm. and that it's broken mm -hmm. and how hard it was. And yet you've got a beautiful four-year-old mm -hmm. daughter. Yeah. So just, you know, the mic is yours. Tell us. You know, I, ha I have to say that I wouldn't have her if it wasn't for the process and if it wasn't for adoption and whatever agencies out there or whatever, you know, however avenue you go to adopt. But there is a lot that needs to be done. There need, a lot that needs to be fixed. And basically, there's d several different avenues. And if you're somebody that's watching this that has adopted or is trying to go through the adoption process, each agency or if you work with a lawyer, so, there's some processes where you don't even work with an agency. There's attorneys that can handle that, which, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know anything about that. I haven't done that. But there's different agencies. There's ones where you fill out all the forms and y you pick what you know, okay, what will you accept? Okay. And then that's the part that took us Those three are months. The words? Yes. Accept. Okay. That's another problem that I have. Yes. Okay. But you have to fill out all these forms. Okay. Well, you know, um, family history of MS, family history of multiple di muscular dystrophy, you know, all of these things. And you have to sit there and think about them. Like you didn't have to do that if you were having a child naturally right. because it's whatever God, you know. So we, it took us three months to fill out that paperwork. And to be able to be like, I just kind of just put an A. <laughs> I'm like, no answer. <laughs> you know? And they accepted that. Yeah. Well, I mean, at a certain point, you're kind right. of just, you know, I'm like, whatever, God has picked whoever I, whoever is mine already, you know? So I was, I had a hard time with that. But so then when you go through the process, there's certain agencies that will place you with a birth mother. And then, and this is if you're adopting an infant from birth, there's different processes with you know, children who are older, mm -hmm. um, but they will place you with a birth mother and then they'll say, okay, we're done. We're good. Good luck. Have a great day. Then there are other agencies and then you just kind of work with the birth mom and, you know, whether you pay her, you know, uh, medical bills or whatever, however you work it out. And then you go and you go to the hospital and there's no one there to really advocate for you or the birth mom. Mm -hmm. Our agency that we used was, um, you know, Hopeful Beginnings in Chicago, which I absolutely love them. They they protect both sides. So they have a social worker who is a advocate for the adoptive family, and then they have a social worker that's an advocate for the birth mom. You need that because this is a, such a hard decision to make on a birth mother. And, you know, when we were in the hospital, I can only use my experience, but it was very much like adoption was looked down upon. It they if Mila hadn't have been in the NICU, they were pushing her to sleep in the room with the birth mother, even though on the the board it said adoption, which, you know, why are you trying to put her back into an uncomfortable situation when you don't know what she's battling, you know? And then they um was standing over Mila and changing her diaper or learning how to do it, and the nurse said, "So you couldn't have your own, so you just chose this one." Oh. And I, she's laying there, and I said, well, she can hear you, uh, but I, I, when you put it like that, I guess, you know, but it's, it's, it's treated like several years ago, you know, many, many, many years ago when there were some issues with, you know, wealthy people buying children. I don't know. I, that was a long time ago, but I feel like there's still some of that out there, mm -hmm. and you th get these families that go into the hospital and they don't have an advocate, they don't have a social worker, they don't have, the birth mom doesn't have a social worker and they're being pushed to breastfeed. They're being pushed to mm -hmm. sleep in the same room. And then you have 
these they change their mind when really three weeks later they're like i can't do this Aww. and then they go into the the system so it's it's a system that really needs work and really needs to know that there are wonderful families out there that are looking that maybe can't have children or maybe they were called to adopt and they shouldn't they should it shouldn't be that hard there, there are 13,000, I don't know that the exact number, but there are about more than 13,000 children in the state of Texas in foster care. Mm -hmm. And there's not even enough places for them to sleep. And you're making, you're making it this, you know, where women are changing their minds and then the kids are going into the system and it's, there's just a lot that needs to be done. That's a, a lot. Whole, mm -hmm. That's a whole drawing for you over yeah. here, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I've not, I've talked with a lot of, um, friends who have adopted and most of them Kaylee adopted overseas mm -hmm. so I heard stories about going to different countries and all mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. but to think and that's why this is important for being on the show and telling us this to be aware of what is happening here in the United States and to what would you say to someone watching or listening who wants to adopt Help them not have what happened to you. What do they do? Do your research. Do your research. Do, talk. I called. I had met a woman within days of moving to Chicago who ended up owning an adoption agency. But I still called and made appointments with three different adoption agencies because this is a huge, huge moment. You are going to spend a lot of money on home studies and background checks and just placement in general. You need to make sure that you feel comfortable with the journey that you are about to go on because it will be very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it will be beautiful. Like there's, you know, I sit here and I'm so happy. It's such a, I'm, I feel lucky that I am an adoptive mom. Like I feel lucky that I got to go through that. But <laughs> I, there are some things that I would change. And now more than ever with the controversies going on out there right now, there needs to be a there needs to be assistance and there needs to be the resources available for especially birth moms. I'm a big advocate for birth moms. You know, we got so lucky. Mm -hmm. I'm so blessed, you know, but they resources for birth moms and for adoptive families. And this could be a very beautiful story for a lot of people, but a lot of them aren't that beautiful or they, they hit roadblock after roadblock because mm -hmm. it's broken. Mm -hmm. So Kaylee, um, I would imagine there are people who would want to talk to you. Yeah. And uh, please, <laughs> I knew you'd say that. So, I would love to help anybody that I can. So at the end of the show, stay tuned. Don't leave yet. We'll have her uh, email and you can look at that as well as though her social media organization. So before we go, what is Mila like? Oh, she is a spitfire. First of all, Mila works <laughs> well, on Mila you. time. No, it's funny because, you know, I, I say this to my parents. My parents will tell me things. We'll wa we'll, they'll watch Mila do something. And they'll say, you did that when you were little. Oh. Like, not now. Like, when you were little, you uh -huh. did that. Uh -huh. And it's, it's funny to think of a child who didn't come from me. I mean, she's with me every day, but she didn't come from me, but she is exactly like me. Yeah. It's scary. So <laughs> but she's awesome and we have the best time she's so much fun and you know she's a little sh she's not, she's shy she's she's not as outgoing as i am but i love it she's evolving i bet <laughs> we'll see <laughs> that's that's such a beautiful story i i just um to really get down into the nitty gritty of the process and and i'm visualizing when you talked about it kaylee being in that room with the mother and um, that would be heart wrenching in a yeah. good way, in a good way. Yeah. So and we still have a sure. relationship with her and you that's know, that's, good. it's great. It's, it's so beneficial for Mila. Yes. It, it's all for Mila. So, yes. mm -hmm. and that's beautiful too. Mm -hmm. Not everyone chooses to let little ones know. So, mm -hmm. so young. If it's, if it's appropriate, if it's appropriate, mm -hmm. that's, that's a good way to mm -hmm. say it. Yeah. We uh, we did talk about some of your other lessons learned through your life of all these things you've done so so well and so young, and I want to cover a couple of them before we go, which is it's not just about you and give yourself grace. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about those two. I have to give myself grace like every day, <laughs> every day. I I I really truly believe we are all flawed and we all make mistakes, and you have to just know like just do the best you can. <laughs> just 
just do the best you can and it's take a deep breath, count to 10 and you've got it, you know? That's so that's the biggest thing. And, you know, my mom's like, what does that even mean? I'm like, it just means give yourself a minute and give somebody else a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody's and you're annoyed, you, you're, you're mad, put yourself in that place and think, okay, how would I be if this was my scenario, if mm -hmm. this was my life? And then for a second there, you no longer think me, 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 me. Oh, and it's it, not all about me, 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 is it's it? It's not all about you. <laughs> and then you feel, oh, okay, okay. I'm. This isn't right still. I still feel not, it's not so sturdy about this, but I'm not enraged, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Give yourself some breaths. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, Kaylee, this has been a, an incredible show on so many levels. We got to learn about being a meteorologist and then about <laughs> your wonderful process and the joy that Melee is bringing you and your oh, husband, yeah. Jonathan. So I'm so happy with you. And as you know, I've already recommended you to several friends who aren't you all saying, I need some help with social media. Many <laughs> of you are saying that. At least they're calling me and asking, do you know someone? So stay tuned because yeah. you are going to be inundated. I am just sure. <laughs> well, hey, come on down. And so uh, at the bottom of the screen, you can see where to contact Kaylee. And I hope you do. And be sure and on this show, make comments. You know, it really matters when people see that someone has been touched. My guest is who I'm talking about. When guests have made a difference on this show, how would they know? Uh, I get lots of calls. Oh, Valerie, I like that guest. But, you know, they need to see that too. So comment on this show. And please be sure if you have not subscribed to Doing It Right, don't miss any of the shows. There's so many great guests. And share this show. I'm sure that it will be a blessing to, to many, many others. So, Kaylee, thank you so much for being here. Thank on. you for having me. Ed. This has been amazing. So That's I appreciate amazing. it. You yeah. bet. We'll talk about social media too as far as other people. I got my yeah. Germany people who are doing it so far. Yeah. But it's not easy. I know that. I know mm -mm. that. So thank mm -mm. you. Oh, blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, I want to leave by just reminding you of what I do. So many of the shows, the producer will say later early on, Valerie, no one knows what you do. So I'm going to tell you what I do. <laughs> In the leadership development firm that we founded, I say 25 years ago, maybe 26 years ago. But I've got lots of experience in helping people like you who want to level up your professionalism. That's the word. Do you want to be better in how you show up? Call it presence, call it your image, whatever you call it. You know what I'm talking about. And you know if it's something that you want to level up and get better at. That's what I do. That's what I know, and I can own that space because I've been doing it for a lot of people for a long time. So just email me, Valerie at ValerieAndCompany.com. And here's a gift. If you will share this show with five people or more, and if you then send me an email, Valerie at ValerieAndCompany.com, I will send you one of my books called Business Casual Clarify please. That's the name of it. And I make it simple for you. What in the heck is business casual? So share this show with five people. Let me know you did it. You'll get a book, business casual, clarify, please. I hope you like it. And yep, I've got a couple more up front here. They're on Amazon, do it right from which the show is named and Monday morning leadership for women tips on it. You'll like them. Now stay tuned. I have a Valerieism for today. And here it is. Don't waste a rainy day. <laughs> Guess why I thought of that one. It's raining outside. Don't waste a rainy day. And here's what came to me. Many years ago, I uh, lived in Detroit, Michigan for three and a half years. And I had three babies under four. So it was easy for me to get down because it rained a lot. And gray skies. I hate to say this, Detroiters, but... It's a lot of that weather, isn't it? My weather friend here. And I began thinking, oh, I'm not liking this weather. I mean, it was, I was spiraling down. And one day a friend of mine said, oh, I love rainy weather because that's when I bake chocolate chip cookies. And I'm telling you, it was a pivot because from that moment on, 
when it rains or it's a yucky day, I'll go inside and I'll do something that feeds my soul. For me, it's cooking. And so chocolate chip cookies, everybody loves is what I do. What do you do? What could you do when it's a rainy day? Don't waste it. And that's it for now. Until next time, have a great rest of the week. Thanks for listening. To receive Valerie's voice, free monthly leadership tips, and to learn more about her leadership programs and coaching, visit her website, ValerieAndCompany.com. Next week, we'll be here again to inspire, engage, and equip you with teachable points of view from successful leaders who have been doing it right. Until then, lead authentically.